Hey folks, Jake Baldino here. It is uh, Hardware Week at Game Ranks. A bunch of hardware dropped at the same time. So what we did was we went to the store and we bought the new PlayStation 5. A lot of people have been calling it the PlayStation Slim, but in reality, this is kind of just like a PlayStation revision. This is the version with a disk drive that was available right now, and you get it in like a bundle with Modern Warfare 3 or Spider-Man 2 for $500 in the United States. And the plan from Sony themselves is that this will eventually just become the new PlayStation 5. The older version will be phased out, and this is it going forward. And what comes with this is uh, some upgraded storage. And uh, what I will say is that like, do you need to run out and buy this thing right now? No. Uh, if you have been waiting for a PlayStation 5 and maybe you're gonna be end up getting this type of unit, well, here's some info. Yes, it has been three years since the launch of the PlayStation 5. Remember we made that video? We put the PS5 on a DeLorean? Yeah. That was crazy. That was awesome. So yes, three years and that first year or so was rough. Some people, a lot of people haven't even gotten their hands on a PlayStation 5 until recently. Maybe you're looking to buy one in the next couple of months, you'll likely end up with uh, something like this. So let's just talk about it. So let's rip the Band-Aid off, uh, get the elephant out of the way, whatever you wanna say. Uh, the design of this thing. Yes, it is smaller. I think some of that comes down to your brain. <laughs> I've seen a lot of opinions out there. Some people think it's not shrunk down enough. Some people think the size difference is really small. I think it's a nice little step down in size. As you guys probably remember uh, with our original PlayStation 5 video, like the design I was kind of like whatever on, but the actual size of it was way too big. So this sort of corrects that. Obviously you can see our side-by-side -side comparisons here. It is still a somewhat large boy, but I think it's just maybe the way the panels work out, just like the optics of it. It might actually just kind of feel smaller or like trick my eye to look smaller than it actually is. The actual reduction in size uh, with like the math and stuff I'm not gonna get into isn't too much smaller, but for me, as someone specifically who went on record bitching about the size of the original PS5, I think this is an improvement. Now, I started the video by saying a revision because you know the design isn't completely overhauled and uh, nothing's really changed. Obviously, some internals have changed on the inside to shrink it down. Uh, a lot of channels have done a really good job breaking down the technical stuff, you know, the smart people. But there are two notable improvements and you may or may not care about those improvements, uh, but the first is the fact that it is shipping standard with a one terabyte storage. So that's an upgrade from the 800 and something from the original base PS5. Not the hugest jump, but still very much warranted. That's like half of a Call of Duty game. But also just some smart little things like uh, two USB ports on the front now uh, with you know the, the, the standard port in the back and the modularity here. From a design standpoint, if you are the type of person that likes to open up their PlayStation, uh, this is much better. I will say that this PS5 Slim, whatever it's called, is shockingly idiot-proof. Uh, popping the panels off feels way less sketchy uh, compared to last time. They pop off very easily. It's very clearly designed to be welcoming to being opened up. Uh, we haven't broken any plastic tabs or anything like that, opening it up multiple times, which is good. Uh, the panels pop right off. And then of course, there is the disk drive. The disk drive is like one chunk, one unit that is detachable. You can just completely and easily remove it. This is going with Sony's plans to also uh, offer an all digital version of this that doesn't come with the disk drive. And then if you want it later on, you actually have the option to buy it for $80 in the US as of right now. So, you know, not cheap, but I think consumer options are always good. I like physical media. So personally, I like having a disk drive, but I will say it's really fun to remove. Uh, it pops right out, you pop the panel off, then you pull it out by just yanking up and there's like one connection point for like the data that, and you don't really have to worry about breaking like a ribbon cable or anything like that. Chances are you're not gonna be like yanking this thing off every day, you know, or anything like that. But again, it goes back to how I think this thing is just pretty idiot proof if you are messing around with it. Accessing to add storage, you know, more storage drives, that's pretty easy. We'll show it on screen here. It's all very straightforward. And little things with the modularity now that's nice is that the disk drive gets its own dedicated eject button. So uh, it, that means the power button is just the power button on the main unit. You're not like looking at those two buttons and you're like, wait, which one's which? Like I would always do that by accident. I don't know if it's cause I'm turning into a grandpa, but <laughs> it's a little bit more foolproof from that standpoint now. Uh, but speaking of standpoints, uh, the PlayStation 5 is now held up by these little leggies, these little clear plastic things that you pop into the bottom. They come out 
you know, they stick in firmly, but they pop out pretty easily. You know, nothing too sketchy. And uh, it definitely kind of detracts from what they were going the first time around where, you know, horizontally, the PlayStation looked like it was floating. Now, even though these legs are clear, you can clearly see that there is like something holding it up. That being said, I went on record last time and I went on records multiple times, the, the regular PlayStation 5 plastic stand, I hate that thing. It's a piece of crap. I've broken two of them. I know a lot of people say, Jake, why? Are, what are you? What are you doing? I don't know. But for a couple of bucks, you can actually buy a stand if you want to have this thing sit vertically. I don't like that PlayStation is is making that an extra. Uh, but they did that back in the old days. I remember buying a vertical stand for the PlayStation Two. Not saying that's right or anything, but it's just kind of funny how things. Ca the more things change, the more things stay the same. That being said, uh, we don't have one of those stands here, but there are photos of it online, and I think it's pretty. Ugly. That's of course personal opinion. That's just me. I'm a judgy little design boy, but different strokes for different folks. Everybody's gonna have a preference. Obviously, it's not like a massive overhaul from the look of the original PlayStation. The design break is really because of the modularity. Uh, it's worth noting, I don't know if the cameras can pick it up, but the top part is glossy while the bigger bottom part is more of the matte texture that you know. And I should have said this up front too, but in terms of it being a revision, that means that like it's, it doesn't have new hardware inside. It's the same SOC. Uh, there isn't really any power efficiency upgrades or anything like that according to people have who have ripped the thing apart. It is technically a little quieter and I will say that also the disk drive sounds about the same. And interestingly enough, like with the disk drive, it being, you know, a consumer choice and detachable and all that, it's not all a happy ending. Uh, you do essentially have to register it to the PS5. You need an internet connection that has made headlines uh, before the thing uh, technically released and we were able to confirm when we started it up uh, that there was a little bit of a setup process for the disk drive that is on the freaking machine. Yes, in this day and age, it sounds absolutely ridiculous. Sony has their reasons as a corporation and like piracy and ah, whatever. Not really a fan. The average consumer isn't gonna care, but uh, also uh, it, it did take like two updates to the disk drive itself uh, before we got this thing going. So that was part of the setup process. Uh, if you're jammed up about, you know, this day and age, every game takes an update, the controllers take an update. Well now, the disk drive needs an update too. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Otherwise, again, this thing is pretty cut and dry. This is, again, more of a revision, a little bit of a cut down. So I think the design or the little redesign here uh, didn't come necessarily out of wanting to overhaul the design, but essentially more of a marketing corporate thing going for, you know, cost savings and more consumer options and stuff. And, you know, so now Sony can charge you for a disk drive and stuff like that. I'm spitballing, because honestly, like this isn't that exciting. I think it looks very nice. I was actually surprised how nice it actually looks. But again, do you need this? No. But if you are jumping into this now, uh, just a word on the state of PlayStation now in 2023, uh, there has been a pretty good lineup of games. So if you're behind on three years of Sony first party games, you do have a lot to catch up on from, you know, if you want to get crazy with PlayStation VR 2 uh, to then just like, you know, Horizon Forbidden West, uh, Spider-Man 2, more recently, Returnal kicks ass. Hell yeah, it does. God of War, Ragnarok, like, I'm not gonna sit here and rattle off all the games, but there is a lot to play through on the first party side. And then, you know, from our experience here, it's also a good third party machine. What I'm more curious to see is like what Sony has cooking uh, for the future, because, you know, we have their PlayStation portal that we're also going to be talking about later this week, the handheld remote play device. But um, I wanna know what kind of games they have in the pipeline. We know there's going to be like an Insomniac Wolverine game and a couple of other things floating around out there, but like I'm curious to see like what Sony's next big slate is their next big roster uh, their next big chunk of blockbusters and whether or not those are as compelling as they have been in the past. Headlines uh, more recently has suggested that Sony has shifted focus uh, to more of a live service type thing and make more games that are endlessly playable, multiplayer style things like, you know, their spins on something like, I don't know, a Fortnite or a Warzone or a Destiny or, or whatever, that style of game, uh, but with a Sony first party kind of spin on it. Leadership has changed at Sony and there are new reports saying that they are scaling back work on some of those games. They're deprioritizing that. They're maybe backpedaling because the world can only have so many live service games. So with that being said, I'm curious to see where they're pivoting and how much they're dumping into developing new games, be it big AAA games or those middle of the road games. So down the line, I don't know, I'm sure there's gonna be cool stuff to play, but again, if you're just catching up now, there are a lot of cool games uh, from the last three years or so to get caught up on. And whether you do it with this new slight redesign, slight 
update or a, an original base PS5 or whatever, really. We hope you have fun. That was just a quick look, our hands-on, messing with this thing for the last two days or so. Like I said, we just ran to the store and bought one, so we just wanted to give you guys a first look and our impressions. So I wanna hear from you guys if any of you did get your hands on one of these for any reason. Let us know what you think. Also, are you a PlayStation person? Were you waiting around for a little bit of a revision to get one? Uh, is this enough for you? Let's talk anything. PlayStation 5, Sony, uh, the PlayStation ecosystem, the consoles, down in the comments. We definitely wanna hear from you guys. But with that being said, we are doing uh, some more in-depth work on both the PlayStation Portal and the OLED Steam Deck. So keep your eyes peeled for those videos later in the week. Uh, you can subscribe if you want, because uh, GameRanks put down videos every single day. But if you like this video, you appreciate us here, clicking the like button helps us. Thank you. But that's it. I'm Jake Baldino. We'll see you guys next time.